Welcome to a proof of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 2. In this proof, we'll be using the mean value theorem. The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 2, states that if a function f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and big F of x is the antiderivative of f of x on the closed interval, then the definite integral of f of x with respect to x from a to b equals big F of b minus big F of a. So this tells us we can determine the value of this def integral by first determining the antiderivative, big F of x, then evaluating the antiderivative at the upper limit of integration, which is b, then at the lower limit of integration, which is a, then determining the difference. Now let's work on our proof. For the proof, our goal is going to be to write big F of b minus big F of a in a form so that we can apply the mean value theorem. So consider the closed interval from a to b with the following partitions. So we'd partition the closed interval from a to b by letting a equal x sub zero and b equal x sub n. And then we use x sub one through x sub n minus one to form the partitions, which would look like this along a horizontal axis. Now that we have our partitions, now that we have our partitions, it follows that to find big F of B minus big F of A, we can sum increments of the function values using the partitions, where big F of B minus big F of A would be equal to the sum of these differences. Let's look at this graphically to make sure we understand this. If we look at the graph of a possible big F of X graphed here in blue over the closed interval from A to B, notice this value here would be big F of B and this value here would be big F of A. So big F of B minus big F of A can be viewed as this length here. And we're saying this distance here would be the sum of the vertical distances over each partition. So looking at the first partition from X sub zero to X sub one, this vertical distance here would be big F of X sub one minus big F of X sub zero. Looking at the next partition, this vertical distance here would be big F of X sub two minus big F of X sub one. So if we sum these vertical distances over all the partitions, it would be equal to big F of B minus big F of A, which is what we're saying here. And now we're going to write this sum using sigma notation. So we'd have big F of B minus big F of A equals the summation of big F of X sub I minus big F of X sub I minus one from i equals one to n. So this notation here would give us the same sum of these differences. Now by the mean value theorem, there exists a number c sub i in the ith sub interval such that big F prime of c sub i is equal to the quotient of these two differences, which remember would give us the slope of a secant line over one partition. So this is telling us there's one x value within each sub interval where the slope of the tangent line, big F prime of C sub I, would be equal to the slope of the secant line passing through the two endpoints of the closed interval. And just in case you need it, here's a quick review of the mean value theorem. If the conditions above here are met, the mean value theorem states that F prime of C is equal to this quotient here, where again this quotient is the slope of the secant line passing through the two endpoints of the closed interval, and C is an X value, in the open interval where the slope of the tangent line at that location would be the same as the slope of the secant line. And now we'll let delta X sub I be equal to X sub I minus X sub I minus one. And since big F prime of C sub I equals little f of C sub I, because remember, big F of X is the antiderivative of little f of X, and therefore the derivative of big F equals little f. So now we'll substitute delta X sub I for X sub I minus X sub I minus one, and we'll substitute little f of C sub I for big F prime of C sub I, which gives us this equation here. And now if we multiply both sides by delta X sub I and flip the equation around, we would have big F of X sub I minus big F of X sub I minus one equals F of C sub I times delta X sub I. So this equation tells us this difference is equal to this product for each subinterval. But if we want an equation over the entire interval from A to B, we would have big F of B minus big F of A, 
is equal to the sum of these products from i equals one to n. We need to recognize that as delta x sub i approaches zero, meaning the width of the subintervals approach zero, and the number of partitions or subintervals would approach infinity. So now we'll take the limit of both sides of this equation here as n approaches infinity. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the left must equal the limit as n approaches infinity of the right. But notice on the left, big F of b minus big F of a is just going to be a constant, and this is not affected by n, and therefore on the left, this is just going to be equal to big F of b minus big F of a. And now looking on the right, we should recognize this limit. This limit is the definition of a definite integral. So for a quick review, the definition of a definite integral is given here, and notice how this limit on the right is the same limit we have in our proof. And therefore, by definition of a definite integral, we have big F of b minus big F of a equals the definite integral of f of x with respect to x from a to b, and we have our proof. If we change the order of this equation, we have the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two. The integral of f of x with respect to x from a to b equals big F of b minus big F of a. I hope you found this helpful.